Welcome to the Writer's Life. Place we get the sights, sounds, smells, tastes of my particular writer's life. And where you get the truth about the writer's life. Like my t-shirt. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Punch the like button and tap the bell for notifications so that you don't miss out on one single exciting video. So my my buddy, I don't know him, but we're kind of like buddies over the internet. Dean Wesley Smith and uh, mentor to many, um, whether he knows or not, um, was talking about IP on his blog today. Um, and every time he does that, it gives me agita because I don't have a trust set up yet for my kids and all that stuff. And I really need to do it because um, I own outright like over half my list at this point. Um, so I think I have like something like 140, 130 to 140 books out there, like in paper. Most of all of them are in ebook. Most of them are in paper and most of those are in, also in audio. So there's different formats, a um, couple foreign editions, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, that's a lot. And I'm slowly, slowly getting my rights back from some of the publishers, you know, or whatever. And I'm sp still working with some of the publishers as well. But that's, I'm not sure how, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be next year. But right now, I'm concentrating on now. Right now, I'm concentrating on now. That's another Ringoism, like a hard day's night. Um, anyway, um, the point is, writing is an investment. Okay, traditional writing, the traditional part of it. Once you go from, no, God, I got that wrong. Take two. Writing is an investment, especially the indie part of it. Once you go from traditional to indie, um, you no longer are like, in Dean's words, you're no longer like just manufacturing something or growing like a stack of bananas that's going to go bad at some point and just not make any money for you. Mm -hmm. Instead, you become like a developer. Um, now, I know a lot about developing because I was in the construction business for a while. Um, and when you're a developer, you buy a piece of property. And in our case, it's intellectual property, but it's still a piece of property. And you develop it into something that's going to make you money. Um, maybe not a lot of money right away, but over the long term, it's going to make you some de a decent payback, a decent return on investment. Um, okay, so for instance, just take a stupid short story. Uh, maybe on the indie side of things, it costs me. Dean likes to include like the time it takes you to write the short story. I don't include that. Because to me, this is just fun, but um, I just include like the cost of production. So like, okay, say it used to cost me like hundreds, if not thousands to put out, it used to cost me like hundreds of dollars, even to put out just a short story. Um, and I'm still working on paying some of those off, right? Paying, you know, paying my initial investment off. But now in this, in the 2020s, um, the costs have come down dramatically um so now i can put out a short story or even a novel for just a fraction of what i used to spend um and to be honest um they're coming out better than ever and my stars my well my reviews are showing it even though i should be working more on promotions for to get more stars but whatever right now i'm right now i'm working on filling up my list and then in the future, I'll work more on promotions. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of my skis here. Um, okay, so say it cost me $150 to put together a short story of maybe, I don't know. My short stories are long short stories, so say anywhere between like eight and 10,000 words. Um, say I sell just... $15 worth of that story that year, you might be like, oh, God, why even bother, right? Why even, why even fucking bother? 
um, that's a 10% return. Now think of it. What investments do you have with your money manager or whoever, with your Charles Schwab account or whatever, that's making you 10% consistently per year? Very little. What if we sell $30 worth of that, uh, of that short story, just a short story. It's like a 20% of return on investment. Now you're getting up there and, but you're still like, geez, it's only 30 bucks. Like you, you can't even go out to dinner for 30 bucks anymore. Right. You know, I think the only investment out there that's doing better than 20% a year really is like Bitcoin, <laughs> maybe Tesla. Um, and I own Bitcoin too. So, um, but you know, you get the point, um, when it's, you know, this goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. And that's why you need to set up, uh, your intellectual property into a trust for your children, because eventually if you're prolific, like I am, like this guy is. You're going to have, before you die, if you don't get hit by a bus, um, you're going to have like three or 400 properties um, in several different formats, which really multiplies those property properties by like three um, that are going to be making consistent money daily. Um, and I also give away free books almost every day. By the way, that's a tax write-off. Bet you didn't know that, but you. Whenever you give away a free book, it's a tax write-off, and I give away thousands per year. So, but anyway, um, so obviously, what's the better move here? The traditional move where you give up your property and you sell a certain number of books, you get an advance, and it goes against your advance. And nine out of 10 times, you're not going to earn out that advance because they're going to make sure you don't earn it out. If you do happen to earn it out, well, then they're like, okay, good. All right, great. <laughs> you know, even better, right? Um, but for the most part, they don't want you to earn out your advance because they'd rather, the publishers, because they'd rather take the hit on their taxes and get a tax break for it. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. They're shysters. No question about it. Not all of them. Like the guys that, down and out, you know, um, and suspense, I guess, or whatever, you know, these guys like truly believe in what they're doing and they want to help authors and stuff like that. And I don't think they make piss, um, cause they don't really do much to promote the books or whatever, but they want to have a, a good home for really, really, really good, good writing. So, um, uh, but they're like, you know, those guys are the outliers but like the big cats in New York or whatever. And believe me, I used to work with them. Um, they're just looking at the bottom line. That's all they care about. Um, but I say that, but I look at my bottom line too. And I know exactly where I'm going to be at in a year, where I'm going to be at in two years, where I'm going to be at in three years. Um, and my return on investment is going to, after this year, is going to be spectacular. I think so long as I keep it up, the writing that is, um, I think it's going to be tremendous and it'll, it'll almost be a passive income. This isn't, you, you'll, you'll hear from people like, um, like, Oh, you know, indie writing, you know, um, it's like passive income. It's bullshit. You know, you have to keep the store up, you know, you know, yeah. Sometimes you're going to have to go change the covers, uh, last night I had to like reformat a book so that it fit undrafted digital. It, they were giving me problems. Um, I've got a couple of stories on Amazon. I got to reformat. So like there's constantly work to do. Um, so whereas now bear media has become so busy that I find myself like working at nights now too, you know, doing business stuff. Um, eventually I'm going to have to hire somebody or two to run the business end of the program. Um, Dean Wesley Smith has what he calls WMG publishing and he's got like six employees, um, between the, between the work that he and his wife put out, they need, they need the help. 
and they're making the money. So this can be lucrative, but it takes time. Don't look for anything spectacular in the short term, but long-term investment, beautiful. It's a beautiful business also, business model also. All right, I got to shut up because this is going too long, but um, it's a beautiful business model also because there is virtually no overhead, virtually nothing. There's no warehousing. There's no nothing. Uh, you just, if you got the talent to do it, you just start up. That's it. You just start writing. There's tons of platforms and tons of stores that will take your work. So anyway, that's it for today. But just make sure you find an intellectual property uh, attorney uh, or financial planner anyway, uh, who can set up a trust for your kids for the future. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it this year. All right, somebody's chiming in. Wayne. Hey, really nice. <laughs> really nice hat there, bro. Yeah, it's it's not quite there yet, Wayne. It still looks pretty still looks too new. This hat's nine years old. I got it on my 50th birthday. I was uh, I was just coming back from India and I couldn't take being on a plane anymore. So I stopped in uh, San Francisco when it was still nice uh, for uh, a week, a week or 10 days or something. Um, now I, um, you know, I, from what I hear, I've been back since and from, and from what I hear, it's not, city's not doing so great, but it'll, the pendulum swings and it'll come back. So I hope so. It's a really beautiful city and, uh, really, I love the wharf that day on my birthday. In fact, I was like, oh, fish and chips from the wharf on you know, in San Francisco, like what could be better, right? And this gall comes down and like pow, steals it from me. I was, I wanted to cry, but uh, I got another one, and I chowed it down before the nasty seagulls got at it. Read a story about that about the hat. Okay, the magic hat. Don't give me adjective, Wayne. You know the way I am when I get challenged with right now. Now I won't be able to get that off my mind. Get it? All right. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, all right. I will talk to you guys, God willing, tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.